Hey, this is Kev with Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to make this cool dry lake bed. And uh, it's going to be dry. And you're going to like it. And it's going to be the first part of a video. And the next part, we're going to go into compositing it and building it out and stuff. But uh, this video will be a self-contained video and showing you how to just get this in camera. So let's go. First thing we need to do is create our lake. I'm going to create a grid. And I'm just going to say size like 500 meters. Pretty big. Good. Done. We have our lake. See that? How it's like clipping out? So for newbies, take note. You get rid of that by just going over here. Take the end. Throw a few zeros in there. Done. It's just called a clipping plane. Okay, view. Add some more zeros. While we're here, let's do it to the camera too. Camera. So a camera. Go to the end here. A couple more of these zeros. And good. Great. We're done. Now, let's just... You know, let's open that again. Go to item and zero out our camera. So the location here, zero. Rotation and all this. Rotation, zero. And that's good. And then for the rotation on the camera, okay, you can't see them here. Let's turn them 90 degrees. And then raise them up about 1.5 meters. Great. There's our camera. Camera. Move them back. And there we go. Hit zero and wonderful. Perfect. Okay, so now let's just start getting our environment going. First thing I want to do, I'm going to hit N, hide that. And I'm going to go over here to render, change render engine to cycles. Okay, this we're going to be using cycles and a device. I'll change GPU compute so it's a bit faster. And let's get our environment. So I'm going to go to shading and I'm going to go to rendered view and again hit zero. To set the camera up here and now let's just call in a world so right now the world is gray okay here's our little gray thing if I change that to world I get this now background here if I have node wrangler installed I hit control T and I get this if you don't have node wrangler installed just go up here edit preferences add-ons and install it All right wonderful now I'm gonna load in an image that I got off of HDRI haven.com okay so I'm gonna choose quarry 2 and there it is, Quarry 02 4K. And I get this big wall in front of me, and that's probably not what I want to be seeing. So I'll just rotate on the Z over here. First, change it to texture. And then I'll rotate on the Z over here about 150 degrees. There. Now I have, like, this side of the image, and it's looking decent, so I can use it. So now let's go ahead and start making our lake. So to do that, I'm going to go back here to Object, select the lake which I should call lake. I'm going to hit new. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to hit the principal shader and I'm going to pull him out and I'm just going to concern myself with displacement. Now, before I do this, I have a video up here where I explain displacement a lot better. So it'll be linked inside the, the, the link area here. You can always check it out. It's, uh, it's decent and it'll go over a lot more than what we're going to do because we're going to breeze through this now. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to feature set supported change this to experimental okay because we want this to be able to deform then i have to go to material all the way down go to settings and change displacement from bump only to displacement and bump you can do displacement only but i'm going to do both okay fine and i'm going to go to modifiers here for the lake add modifier subdivision surface and check adaptive now I can, I'm set up and I can actually displace this geometry. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add in a displacement. So I'll just hit shift A. I'll go to vector and say displacement. Plug that in purple to purple. And then for displacement here, I'm going to hit control T because I have node wrangler installed and I get to do that. Okay. I'm going to put this here and I'm going to take these guys and pull these guys out. Change that to texture. And now I can change this. So I don't want an image texture. We're going to do this with procedural shading. So I'm going to hit Shift S to swap because I have Node Wrangler installed. And I'm going to say Texture Voronoi. And now we see nothing because, well, there's it's too small. So if I change scale here to like 150, now we start seeing this pattern happen and it looks kind of like dunes so somebody asked me hey can i make dunes with this thing yeah like you can use this and soften it up a bit and that would probably work i could think of a better way but that'll work so now let's go to our voronoi here 
and we're just going to pull them out. And we're going to change a few things here. All right, so let me get this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change closest to crackle, and that's going to give me a different pattern. And then I'm going to go add converter color ramp, throw a color ramp in here, take this back to about here, and there we go. Now I have this nice dry lake bed. A bit big, but dry lake bed. So if I change scale here to like 800, there we go. So yeah, it's like stepped and not very good looking yet, but we're going to get there. So this gives you a very basic dry lake bed look with not a lot of work. So now what we can do is I can go here and I can change the base color. So what I'll do is I'm going to throw in another one of these color ramps. So I can just go here, hit shift D, pull this over, and I can plug color into base color. And now what I'll do with this is I'll select a color that's more like what we want. So I'll go for like something a little bit darker like that. And then I can control this and break it up. Just add a little more detail in here with a Musgrave texture. So I'm just going to go add texture. I'll say Musgrave. I'll plug factor to factor. And I will go uh, change this to hybrid multifractal. And while I'm at it too, before I forget, uh, when we added this, it's not color to factor. We want factor to factor, okay? Kind of makes a difference. So that's just the correct data type. Now, what I'll do here is I'm going to play around with this. And you start getting some break up in here, okay? I don't, I don't need too much of it but just enough that it starts giving me something a little more interesting than just that flat look. So I want a few different shades in here and, and that's probably pretty good. So now what I can do is just add a little more detail to this by throwing in a bump map. So I'll just go here, throw in a bump map. Okay. Normal to normal, purple to purple. And while I'm here too, I can connect a few of these things. So I'll go UV to vector over here, and then I'm going to add in something over here. So I'll, I'll add in a texture. It'll be a noise texture. Okay. I'll throw a factor to height, take this UV, throw them into vector. And then I can scale this up to like 1500. And that breaks this up a bit more. Now what we can also do here is right now the strength is pretty high. It's a little shiny. So I'll take the roughness up and I can control the depth here by this scale. So I'll take this to 0 0.08, maybe a little more, 0.18. That's better. It starts cracking and it doesn't look too crazy. And it looks a little bit uneven and I kind of like that. Now with this little stair stepping thing here, you can play around with this dicing scale and you can lower it from one down and the lower it gets, the tighter this will get and the more resolution you'll get. But it comes with a price and that price is render time and it'll choke your computer. So be careful with this one. I'll leave it at one for now and we will go on from here. So now I can add a little more detail to my noise. Maybe push it up a little bit and see what we're getting. Okay. So that's getting a decent breakup. Okay. I'm kind of liking that. And while we're here, I could probably just go and the size of these cracks are dictated now by this. So the further away you move the white from the black, the wider these gaps go. So that's probably decent. And I could probably go back to 0.08. I'm not liking that. 0.1. That's giving me some crack. Tighten that up a little bit. And we're getting somewhere. All right. So we can always return to this later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and add the mountains. So for that, I'll go to layout. And I'm going to go add mesh landscape. Now landscape, what that does is it throws in this thing and it's called another noise tool Ant Ant landscape. If it's not there under add, you have to enable the add ons, edit preferences, add ons and type in ANT landscape, another noise tool, ANT landscape. Okay. So it gives me this. I don't really like that. So I have all these presets here. I'm going to choose mountain one. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, if you look at this, not much resolution. So let's change that 128 over here. I can change to 512. 
It'll think for a little bit. And when it comes back, there we go. More resolution. I like that. So let's scale this thing up. Let's push them out to the edge of the horizon here. Look through our camera and there we go. There's the Lonely Mountain. It's not really what we want. So I'll scale it up a bit more and I'll scale it down a little bit and I'll scale it out a little bit. And there we go. And then the same way I can add another mountain in here. Okay. I can just go back here, add mesh, and then just go to landscape. And here's how you get a different one. Okay. It comes in with these 512 settings. That's good. We want that. And we just have to change random seed. Okay. It's already on the mountain thing. Cause we already chose that. So I just changed this from three to any other number, or maybe like 15. It doesn't really matter. And then I scale this one up there. Now I have a different mountain and I can do that one more time. So now I can just take these guys here, all right? I can pull them back I can spread them out. Okay. Scale them up and then I can take this, I can move them back. Like this will be behind here. I don't know. Let's go 350. Okay. That's now nice and behind. Okay. That's cool. This guy, same thing, push him back. All right, he'll be in the background. There we go. And now we have mountains. So if I look at this, okay, we're getting somewhere, but they still look like salt. So I'll go back here to shading and I'm gonna go ahead and give these guys a shader. So I'll hit new, okay, it gives me another principle BSDF. And what I'll do is I'm going to grab like a brown color here. Let's see what that looks like. Turn up roughness and maybe make this turn us down a little bit. Maybe make it a little more red. Okay. And that's looking pretty decent. And I can rename this mountains. Okay. Go here. Mountains. Go here. Mountains. And there we go. And what I could do with this too, is if it's not blending in here, which these seem to be doing a pretty good job of, you could go ahead and here's a cool trick. I can add in color, mix RGB. Okay. Take this color, drag it down here. And then this color, I'll make like a really crazy green and put in color. Okay. And now, this gives me the color I want. This gives me the color I don't want. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to control this green with the Z axis. So to do that, I'm just going to go here, hit control T. Okay. If you don't have known Wrangler installed, turn it on. I'm going to change this to generated. Okay. That's important for this. Turn this to texture. And then here, I'm just going to hit shift. Actually, you know what? I don't even need that. I'm going to hit shift S and I'm going to change this to converter separate X, Y, Z plug the Z into the factor and there we go. See, seeing some brown up here. So now all I have to do, cause I'm just working on the Z here. Okay. Height is just go to converter color ramp, throw that in. And now the closer I bring the white down, you see that going away. So you can use this to blend in this. So all you have to do is just grab this, hit this little eyedropper tool and find something, you know, on the horizon that's very close to the mountains. And there you go. So now it looks like it's more, it's blending in more. And you can play around with this. Okay. Bring it down more and just get an edge. You can darken it a little if you want. Okay. And just, just play with it until you get something you like. Now also we can kind of blend out these mountains in the background. Um, instead of using fog, which renders a lot longer, but we're going to use that for compositing in the next video, we can fake it by either changing this color to more blue. Or we can add in another one of these guys. So I can just hit shift D, pull this in. Okay. I'm going to put this on the bottom. I could take color one and all I have to do here is select something near the sky. And then it's kind of blends into the sky a little bit. It's, it's a, it's a trick. Um, but if you use it really, really subtly, you can kind of blend, blend out your mountains a little bit. And I, again, like real true volumetric fog is going to work a lot better for this but this is kind of cool and it'll work. So now all that's left is let's go to world and we can play around with our lighting a little bit. So the lighting here is pretty drab. So I, what I could do is I can cheat a little bit on this cause we don't see the background 
and clouds are clouds, I can stretch them down just a little bit, hit like 0.4, and now I start getting more contrast. Okay, it also squishes the sun, so you don't want the sun in here, but a little more, a little more contrast will do. And from here, okay, you can just move the sun around until you find something that you like. All right, some contrast, that's kind of cool. And um, lastly, we can go back here to object. And let's play around just a little bit more, okay, with our lake. And I could take the scale out a little bit more. And I, I really don't need that to be so dark. So what you could do is you can hit minus, you can add, and you get the exact same color here. And then you can just take the value down on this a little bit. Start darkening it a bit, just a little bit, and there you go. So you're getting something like a dry lake bed, and it's working. And then you could also go ahead and take the roughness if you want. Like if you want it like it just rained, you could you know do something like this, or you could just push it up and make it really, really dry and crackly. Okay, some of these like have a little bit baked in. There's a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of, of specular reflection hit in there. So that's kind of cool. And again, you know, you can play with the dicing scale here, but I wouldn't go too crazy. So let's render it now and we'll see what we get. Okay, so here we are rendered and uh, it's, uh, you know, you can see it's about two minutes of frame at 720, nothing great. Uh, we can optimize this obviously like these are really sharp here. This really needs a lot more work here to, to uh, you know We could multiply a noise Over the other displacement and kind of push these out and stuff But I think once the cameras moving later on and uh, we start doing some other stuff in here that I'm gonna address in the next video uh, This a lot of this might go away depending on how fast we move the camera So it's kind of like give or take and re versus render time versus a whole lot of other stuff. So you can go around, play with this, do something similar, and um, you know get a feel for how to create a uh, dry lake bed that's you know somewhat passable. And we're going to go into compositing in the next video or next couple of videos, and I'm going to show you how to break this up and do some more stuff with it. So hopefully you got something out of it, and if you did, great. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.